Oh, hey, you're probably here for Mod Showcase Monday. And good, I'm glad. I appreciate it. This is going to be a very special Mod Showcase Monday because I have listened to your feedback. You want to know what mods I use every single day. So, without further ado, here's about 60 mods. Okay, let's just stretch because this is going to be tough. The best way to show you guys all these mods is by breaking them down into categories. There's going to be about four categories ranging from quality of life, Star Wars, spells, and I think like weapons and armors. I don't remember if I grouped them, but it's going to be a lot of stuff. So follow along. I will try to break this up into chapters so it's nice and easy for you. So let's do it. So let's get things started with the quality of life section. The first ones I have for you are grab the hip and grab the groin. Now some of these mods will also have their own requirements so make sure you get these requirements. Don't screw up installation but some mods have requirements. So the first thing is going to be an NPC. So normally you can grab them wherever you want but now grab the groin and grab the hip. Well let's start with the hip. I can grab here and look I'm holding them by their hip which means we can go ahead and you know twist them around so if you're looking to do a nice well suplex you can or boom that's really fun and then of course grab the groin you can grab them by the groin like this and do fun things just look at how great this is pretty amazing up next is the gravity effects remover so i really just like using gravity you can still see it like this and those effects but it really plays when you're going to grab them like this you won't have like a purple ring around them I love using this one because I don't want to see purple stuff when I'm doing the Lord's work. Moving on, we have Health Modifier. Health Modifier will be a mod in your little book over here under the mod section. Go to Health Modifier and change whatever you want. You can affect yourself as the player, all the NPCs, and make things weighted. Weighted as far as like, well, I want them to be a boss and or a demigod and whatnot. It's all in here. You can have weighted custom or weighted random or weighted default. It's up to you. I really love playing where the NPCs are at custom and you give them about 300% health. It's a good spot for them and it's really fun. Up next, we have dynamic breakables. Dynamic breakables is absolutely amazing. You can turn the mod on and off, which is a fantastic feature because this game is kind of an overhaul. You can also change things like its base health and base damage. If you want to just break things like pretty easily, we can bring it all the way down to about one. And also you can go into player health multiplier and change it from 10 all the way to unbreakable. So now when you're fighting an NPC, when you block their weapons or strike them, there's a high chance of these weapons breaking. Moving on, we have Enhanced Difficulty. If you go into your spawn book right here, you'll see Enhanced Difficulty Waves. Also, what Enhanced Difficulty does is enables them to spawn in your dungeon about 50% of the time. But let's start off with a 1v1 expert fight. They normally look like this, so it'd be cool if they had more armor, but these guys will swing infinitely quicker, as well as block and dodge way more often. So if you're someone that feels like you're really good at blade and sorcery, well, this mod is for you. Moving on, we have Sheath Framework. Sheath Framework is fairly simple. You take a weapon that's compatible with Sheath Framework and you just, well, pull it out of a sheath like it's real life, which is really cool, and you can re-sheath it as well. That way, if you're looking to be extra cringe, this has got you covered. Up next is Instant Slow-Mo Silence. Of course, using slow motion in this game, well, is tons of fun. But Instant Slow-Mo Silence makes you, the moment you press the button, you go into slow motion with no weirdness happening and go out of it, as well as silences the heartbeat. So if I was going to rush up on this guy, I could just press it. I'm in slow motion. There's no turnaround time and I can go in and out of it. It's really great for making yourself feel and look way better. Up next is lift anywhere. And well, it does exactly what it needs to. Normally in Blade and Sorcery, you can only lift when you're holding them from the neck area to get them off the ground. But lift anywhere, well, enables you to lift anywhere. So I can grab him by the foot and lift them up like so. I love this mod and I've been using it for years. Up next we have Limbless Enemies. I absolutely adore this mod because, well, it does exactly what I need things to. You see how he has no hand? Normally an enemy would die, but this guy keeps on keeping on. And also if you go for things like a leg, it will destabilize them and let them wiggle and do all this fun stuff. So it's basically survivable dismemberment and I absolutely love using it. Now, this next one is a spell, but I use it more as a tool, so I included it in quality of life. It's NPC Spawner Spell. 
In your mod book, you'll see NPC spawner, and you can choose their health and who you're actually going to be spawning, which is extremely important. Then you go into your spell wheel and select the NPC spawner. If you just hold and cast it normally, it's going to be a dummy. But if you hold it, then do the trigger or grip, you can turn them into an enemy. And if you do it twice, you can turn them into an ally. So you can make your own gladiator battles, which is really fun to do. Sometimes I... Oh. You weren't supposed to do that yet. Up next, we have multi imbue. We can open the book and go right to multi imbue. Make sure you do apply to items on spawn and leave that as enabled. Then go ahead and grab a weapon and start with your spells. We're gonna do fire and we're gonna imbue this bad boy with fire. Then we're gonna move on to gravity. And then finally, we're gonna finish this bad boy off with some lightning. And now take a look at this weapon. You'll see how this is kind of going from fire to gravity to lightning feel like a true gamer and unleash your inner rgb up next we have painful death so let's start off with someone like this one and this one will change pretty much almost all sound effects it gives you different stab sounds as well as well enemy sounds when you do stuff to them just just take a listen see he went oh and and the stabbing just feels better and then of course uh so when you give him a nice execution that makes sounds you want to hear then we have Soviet's extra effects. I love using this one. So depending on what they're fighting with, you see how metal makes these sparks. It's really awesome. So metal will make sparks and then other parts of the armor will make other types of things. And then you have rocks and wood. So let me show you. This is the wood and I'm gonna go into slow-mo. You can really see it splintering. Look at all that wood splintering, which is cool. And then when you hit rocks, little pebbles come out. It's really cool, it's satisfying. I think you forget that it's there when you're using this mod, but without it, I, I couldn't live. Up next is super important. It's portable books. If I open up the book menu here, and you'll see on the very bottom left is now something called books. We can select that. This now gives me access to everything I could possibly spawn, as well as in a quick ability to travel to different areas. So if I just want to quickly grab a weapon, I go right in here and I can equip it right to my hand or press spawn and it spawns in front of me. The rest of this, well, self-explanatory. Moving on, we have spectator camera control. Now, a lot of you asked me a question, how do I do this? Well, that's not exactly what I'm talking about. What I just showed you was just called the external camera, which is part of the base game. But the base game also has extra features, which enables you to set cameras well using F2. But what spectator camera control does is I can select this one. I could quickly shut off the help display and the logo, but more importantly, wherever I'm looking, I can toggle this one right to free cam. And you'll notice there's now a camera looking right at me, which is really easy to use. If I was to set up a uh, what I call a stationary camera where I don't want it to follow me, I'll do something like this one. It really helps me doing all my intros as well as all of my cringy lore. Up next is the spell wheel enhancer. Now this one technically is about to be sunset because the base game has this feature, but I still love it. Press and hold the spell wheel. It organizes your mods really nice and for you and gives you Look at this cool names of everything. It's all there. Moving on, we have Stabby Arrows. Right now, for some reason, in the base game, you can only grab an arrow pretty much for the back of it. I mean, I guess you could technically do it here, but it looks weird. And you can only stab, like, back here. I don't understand. However, Stabby Arrows enables you to grab here and use it like a weapon, and we can just, well, Stabby Arrow them. <sighs> Up next, we have Wings. I use this mod all the time. I just jump, then press jump again to float in air, and then I can use my sticks to move around and fly. I could also go in the book here under my mods, scroll all the way down and find wings, and I can change how fast and how far I can fly, which is super easy. And then of course, if you're flying and you want to disable it, well, disable it. Up next we have Zendatsu. This is technically a spell, but it can also not be. This one here enables you to cut an enemy, you know, from the middle torso here, and you could turn some things off. For me, I like to turn off the blue tint and the electro spines, and, but I love having slow motion and I love having it as a spell. So what I do is I go right in here, I find a Zendatsu and then I cast cast and it flashes to let me know that's up. So then when I go to fight someone, well, we Zendatsu in slow motion and Zendatsu. Up next is a mod I've been using the entire video. It's called player lip sync. It enables the player's mouth, well, to move like a puppet. Up and down, player lip sync. Up next is a simple mod that's one of my all time favorites. It's called anime neck chop. So if you have an enemy kind of being uppity, go behind them and give them the old hiya right on the neck and they will be completely knocked out for you to do whatever you want. 
Moving on is realistic decapitation. So normally in blade sorcery, when you get that head chop, the head just goes flying. But realistic one gives you, well, a more realistic cut when you go through there. It doesn't really fly as far. And if you're using a less powerful weapon, well, it just goes flop. Nice, easy flop. Our final quality of life mod I'm gonna show you is called Carnage Reborn. You can also find it in your mod book right here. This has a ton of things that you can change. Things like you could deform objects, which is cool when you first do it, but eventually it makes them completely unusable. But there's other crazy things like removable eyeballs and NPCs can be deformed by environment. I'm just gonna turn off the eyeballs and probably leave almost everything as enabled. But what I do like to change is the fatal finishers. Let's get those all the way up. There is so much this mod can do. I want you to explore it for yourself. But for me, I love using it for these finishers. I mean, this guy is just like a regular goofball, but if you were to get an attack right up here, like across the neck here, he'll go into like a finisher mode. Well, he may have just died, unfortunately. I just need a, a little whoop. There we go. See, he goes in this little finisher down state where they're like, oh man, I'm done. It's really awesome. It even makes for some glorious test scenes. So like I said, there's a ton of stuff it can do, so go at it. Moving on, we have the weapons and armor category. So starting off, we have the Medieval Mega Pack. The Medieval Mega Pack adds so much to this game. You have all new categories. You have daggers, blades, axes, rarity, Oh, just so many things to choose from. I'm not going to sit here and make a five-hour video on it, but you have iron pans, you have Native American weapons in here. There's just limitless stuff. You have like a rare section, like a broken longsword, which is one of my favorites. Imbue this bad boy, and well, great things happen as well. Some of my favorite stuff is in the range category because now we have things like a flintlock pistol. This flintlock pistol, of course, has to be loaded and they tell you how. There's like a firearm <laughs> instructional handbook, so that's funny. Load it up. Let's get this guy primed and let's go outside. You are absolutely going to love the Medieval Mega Pack. Moving on, we have Tools of the Trade. Tools of the Trade gives you things like gadgets and different armaments. Let's focus on the armaments. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hidden blade and put it on my metal arm here. Then I do the grip and trigger, well, to have a hidden blade. Then I hold the spell use button and then I can take it off. And now let's build a custom little attachment here. You'll notice that one side is green and the other side is red. All you have to do is hold your hand over it and do the top trigger and that will change it. You'll toggle between what's active and not active, which is very important. So if I wanna jump and then well use a grappling hook, it's important that I don't have this one on. Really simple to use. And then of course you wanna LARP because the new Assassin's Creed game is out. Well, huh! Use the hidden blade and have at it. Up next, we have the Yamato. This is an amazing sword. It is so OP, but it is absolutely fantastic. Makes use of the sheath framework pretty much flawlessly. The weapon itself is buttery smooth for getting right in there and finishing an enemy. And it also has special abilities like this, laser slash. Huh, huh, huh! Anime slice. Dagger barrage. Horrific death unsheath. And then, of course, an absolute anime move. All will fear the Yamato. And then up next is the Inquisitor's Pack. I love the Inquisitor's Pack because it has such beautiful weapons inside. My favorite being Redoubt and, of course, Incursion. Let's start with Redoubt with sheath. Let's spawn that. Grab that one. And then, of course, Incursion with sheath. Both of these make excellent work of sheath framework. I'm gonna put this one up here, and then this one back here. You're gonna learn really quickly that trying to cross draw from your back is, well, almost impossible, but it still feels cool. And then of course you can wah, wah, try to sheath it back there when you're done. But let's focus on the big boy. Incursion is absolutely one of my favorite blades. Just unsheathing it, oh my goodness. It's just so satisfying to use. I love every ounce of it. It is super sharp and when you imbue it, it looks even better while imbued. So what are you waiting for? Get it. Now let's talk about some armors. First up is auto mail. I used to get this more often, but not as much. However, people still ask about the metal arm. It's called auto mail. 
you equip it and it's compatible with most other armors. Not only does it look cool, but it functions as full metal armor, so you can block things and return it with a furious punch. Then we have the medieval armory. You have Wanderer, Sentinel, Paladin, and Elite. All this stuff, you can mix and match whatever you want to wear. It looks awesome. And don't forget, the NPCs can wear them as well. So get ready to fight an entire army. Up next, we have the Knights Templar. You can dress up as a Templar Knight, or once again, an NPC can be them as well. And then finally, my absolute favorite, you have the Lord of the Rings Moria Orcs. These ones sound like orcs, they look like orcs, and whoo you could have a great time just Lord of the Ring LORPing, fighting these damn orcs. All right, up next, we have a bunch of Star Wars stuff. Of course, the first one is the Outer Rim. Choose from your favorite lightsaber, blaster, kyber crystal. The Outer Rim has it all, and then some. They have new things like jelly fruit, which you could nom 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 eat. You have a thermal detonator, I mean. This pack has everything. If you're a Star Wars enthusiast, you absolutely need to have this. Now, with the Outer Rim, you could also get some optional files as well. One of them being Force Sensitive. It enables you to jump really high just by holding it, as well as use the gravity to, well, super push them away. And then there's the NPC Blaster Waves. And when you mix that with the NPC Firearm Fix, well, you have great moments like this. So you absolutely need to get these optional stuff. Then we have the Empire Mini and Rebel Mini Pack. That will enable you to summon things like this Rebel Pilot, as well as wear that outfit. Then there's a Rebel Soldier. You can fight a Stormtrooper, a good old Scout Trooper. There is so many things in there. And of course, we want to make sure they have their blaster. And you can live out your ultimate fantasy of, well, fighting the man himself. Darth Vader. So make sure you get these ones. Up next, we have Force Choke and force disarm. So let's say you're fighting well a whole bunch of rebels. I can use force choke to well use always on telekinesis, just aim right here. I can pull them up. I'm choking him and then of course cast him away. But this lets you do one other thing. I can grab them and then I'm, oh boy, <laughs> I can grab Then while I'm holding it, I'm gonna do the trigger, the grip, and also the touch bar to be like, well, snap the neck. The fun also doesn't stop there because we can use force grip to steal their weapons. This one will only use the top trigger itself. So aim and use the trigger to pull that out of their hands. You can also grab it, but that takes extra skill. All right, let's move on to the big one and the final category, spells. First up, we have death beam. Just hold the grip, point, and well, shoot with the trigger. You can also hold down the spell slash use button or the touchpad if you're on index to fire it and then make a little explosion afterwards. Then we have Destructo Disc. This is super powerful, just hold it above your head, hold down the trigger, and kind of throw it in a claw motion to make sure you get the most out of it. So no matter who you're fighting, Destructo Disc would be their undoing. Then we have Supernova. Supernova is pretty much the way I end all my streams. You're gonna hold down the, well, the trigger button, make it as large as you want, and go ahead and cast that out. It'll move slow depending on how it is, but you can do so much more with this one. Well, we can take an NPC, and cast them inside of it and have them disintegrate. But more importantly, you can actually take hold of this one. I can use telekinesis to actually grab it and I could send it up as well. You used to also be able to manually detonate it if it came in contact with other spells, but I'm pretty sure that was removed, but I just need to try it. Yeah, I didn't think so. It quite absorbed that one. Supernova is absolutely awesome. Make sure you go ahead and download this one. Up next, we have Exploding Fireballs. This will actually replace your normal fireball, so be careful. All it is is you hold it, shoot it out, and then, well, when that hits something, it's gonna explode. Fair warning now that the NPCs will also use Exploding Fireballs to make them infinitely more dangerous. Then we also have the Explosion Spell. I love using this mod. It just explodes things. Hold your hand in front of it and cast the trigger to well go boom. And of course you can make it as powerful as you want. But the real fun is unleashing your inner Bakugo jump and use the explosion to get around as well. This thing will control every direction you go. So keep that in mind. Up next we have the flip spell. This one can be a little motion sickness inducing. So make sure if you're prone to motion sickness, probably avoid this one, but jump and hold down the trigger to cast and well, you can flip. Whichever direction you pull back on the stick while you're doing it will enable you to flip. So when you're doing like a Star Wars battle with your lightsaber, it looks really awesome. I don't think so, Darth Vader, flip all around you and then, hiya! 
looks like you are no longer the master. I am. Flip while slicing you. Up next, we have Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt itself can be customized in your little book here. And it can be a little difficult to use, but aim kind of where your finger here is, like IRL, like on the side of the controller. That's where you're going to be aiming to shoot it. And once you master it, it's going to feel oh so good. Don't forget that you can merge this one for a nice super version. Then, of course, we have Snap. Snap can be equipped in both hands, and the newest update, well, can do some new things. Like, I can make him levitate, and now he's levitating. He's going to have a ton of fun in the sky. That is until I use the right-hand version to, well, crush. There's just so many fun things to do. Like this one, I could polymorph him into a table. And this guy, well, we can smite him. Then finally, we have the Spells Merges Up. It gives you this amazing lightning one, as well as the Fire Merge. So starting off with the Fire Merge, you just cast and hold it, and it fires the, well, the Merge in one hand. Boom! And you could do a Mini Meteor. But you could also merge the Fire Merge to have a super version of it. And this one here, well, it's going to hurt PCs everywhere. Then one of my absolute favorite ones is the one-handed lightning merge because, well, you're about to see why. Suck on this one! Look how powerful that is. And it looks so cool. And don't forget, of course, you can merge this as well. And you will feel like an absolute god as lightning rains down all around your foes. Then finally, we have the JoJo's Time Stop spell. Could you imagine after all your crimes, people want to kill you? That's okay. Stop time. Look at that fireball right in front of me. He was going to hit me. No, no, no. We can't have any of that. And now we could do, well, whatever you want while well, time is slowed. If you want to cast, well, another spell, you can. Just know that time affects almost everything. So laser through your forehead. We can even grab the fireball itself and we could cast that back at him, just right here. So now, when we restore time, oh my gosh, it is just so comical. So go ahead and use this for good, use it for evil. I disabled all the effects because I don't really like having the effects on when I use it, but it is absolutely a blast when you get the hang of it. And trust me, it won't take much to get the hang of it. Well, my friends, that is it for this week's Mod Showcase Monday. Normally, I would tell you to check the description to get all these mods, but unfortunately, YouTube hates when you list like a million things. And I can't really give you a Google Drive link because YouTube will think I'm trying to scam you. So I hope you paid attention and followed along for these mods. I know there was a ton of them. I will do my best to add timestamps. Anyway, I digress. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this Mod Showcase Monday. If you are new to downloadable content, subscribe. It's free. But other than that, I'm Drifter from Downloadable Content, and I'll see you, well, probably tomorrow.